channel one race soon race all human today is saturday september 18th 2021 an imminent threat to our forces and the evacuees at the airport but it was a mistake and i offer my sincere apology as the combatant commander i am fully responsible for this strike and its tragic outcome while the team conducted the strike did so in the honest belief that they were preventing an imminent attack on our forces and civilian evacuees we now understand that to be incorrect all right, joining us right now, CNN senior national security correspondent Alex Marquardt from Washington, CNN national security analyst Juliette Kayam, as well as CNN uh, chief international correspondent Nick Robertson. Uh, Nick, let me go to you first. You there in Kabul. Uh, how is this news being received? You know, I think this is going to be a very key piece of the picture of what happened to explain to the the family who were the victims. I met with one of the brothers today. He lost a daughter. Um, we were standing in, in, the, in the wreckage, around the wreckage of the vehicles. He showed me around the, damage, the damaged house uh, and explained to me everything that they knew. He was happy that the Pentagon had belatedly admitted that his brother was not a terrorist. He said that was a positive. But he had this question. He said, I can't understand they must have known they must have seen that there were children there because what happened was when um, his brother was coming home from work that day it was a routine with the, with the children there it's a very narrow sort of turn from the lane into the compound of the house a small compound and the children would come out and help their father guide him you know get point him in the right direction to get the, to get the vehicle smugly into into that tight space and part of that fun for the children getting to be with their father at the end of the day was to get in the vehicle with him and he said that was what was happening. They children had got in the vehicle with their father as he'd driven in, and then they were going to help him pass the water out of the house, those heavy containers of water that the drone operators had seen him loading into the vehicle that they had feared might have been explosives. So the brother wants to know why, if there were children in the vehicle and milling around the car as it came in, why wouldn't that have been seen? And this perhaps gives us a little more understanding about why the CIA ha have now said that they issued a warning after the Hellfire missile was fired, but a warning that there were civilians in the area. I think this paints a bit more detail into that picture right now, Frederica. Mm. And then Alex, uh, tell us more about uh, the CIA issuing this warning, but it just simply came too late. Are we talking about a minute of uh, an issue of minutes or seconds? It is seconds, Frederica, and that picture that Nick was just talking about, what this does is just, it really adds to the confusion of what was going on in that moment, and it really does raise more questions about the U.S.'s ability to carry out these over-the-horizon attacks uh, against terrorist targets uh, in Afghanistan. Uh, more questions on top of the ones that, that already existed. What we understand from three sources, uh, speaking to uh, our colleagues Katie Bolillis, uh, Zach Cohen, and Natasha Bertrand, is that it was just seconds before that Hellfire missile tore through that white Toyota Corolla that Ahmadi was inside um, and killed him and nine others that the CIA had issued this warning. Uh, this was a military operation. The drone uh, was was controlled by the military. The drone, the strike was ordered by the military. But of course, you have intelligence services, in this case, the CIA, working hand in glove with the military. And what this does is really paint the picture of not only a fast moving environment, but a, a miscommunication where the CIA uh, offered, put, put up this warning, offered this warning uh, to the military, which was the lead on this operation, but it was, in fact, too late. Um, yesterday, when we heard from General McKenzie, the head of Central Command, uh, he kept talking about the context uh, of the situation um, that led to this mistake, as he called it. Uh, we know that there had just been an attack at Kabul International Airport that left 170 Afghans dead, as well as 13 American service members, and we knew that we know that there was uh, an imminent attack, um, and so there was intelligence. There were 60 different pieces of intelligence, according to uh, General McKenzie, that indicated uh, that an attack was imminent, and one of those pieces of intelligence was that a white Toyota Corolla was involved. Uh, in the end, they ended up tracking the wrong one and certainly killing the wrong person. Not only were these 10 civilians collateral damage uh, during a strike against an ISIS target, there was no ISIS target at all, Frederica. Uh.
And and Juliet, I mean, let's talk about what sometimes is a strategic reward that comes with these drone strikes. But then, of course, this underscores the huge risks. Yes, I, but I'm confused a little bit. I mean, about why the Pentagon keeps insisting that they're going to stand by their intelligence. This is an urban environment, and and it's just clear that there's going to be civilians around. So the only thing that would have justified a drone attack, because remember, we still had military presence there, would have been that the benefit of going after someone with a drone outweighed any potential collateral damage. And that is where the intelligence was just so off and inexplicable at this stage, I have to admit. I mean, what the CIA told the Defense Department that there might be civilians around is, is obvious if you just look at any picture. As Nick was saying, a, a narrow driveway around a residential neighborhood, you knew that the, that the attack would have collateral damage. And I do, I do want to raise the challenge, or at least um, a, a, a challenge for the Biden administration as they try to offset our, uh, the gaps that are going to exist in our counterterrorism efforts now that we have no longer have a presence in Afghanistan. Uh, this over-the-horizon aspect to our counterterrorism, both against al-Qaeda and then any other elements of ISIS that might, uh, that might target Western targets. Uh, uh, this is not a... a, a this is not a sign of confidence uh, that we have the intelligence or the interagency communication uh, to uh, to begin that battle. So, uh, look, the military has uh, been open at least so far after the, after the New York Times story. Though, let's just be clear here, uh, and then um, uh, and needs to assess how was their intelligence so off, and how did they convince themselves that this was a target worth getting in the middle of uh, an urban environment? And that's that has to be answered immediately if we're going to continue this counterterrorism effort. And it sounds like you also, um, you know, have a beef with the elapse of time, the explanation for that now, this far out uh, from... We would have, yeah, I mean, we would have known, we would have known that children uh, were targeted uh, within moments. I mean, that were impacted, were killed, uh, killed yeah. uh, within moments, so... Mm. All right. Uh, Juliet, uh, Mark, uh, and Nick, thank you to all of you. Alex, Mark Hart, to all of you. Thanks so much. Thank Very you. sad. We'll be right back. Very sad.